Good morning, everybody. Happy to see you all here today. Um, welcome to our weekly response and recovery call for Downtown Slow. My name is Bettina Swigger and I'm the CEO of Downtown Slow. And uh, we're joined by about 30 of you this morning. So thanks so much for being with us today. And never fear, we are going to be talking about the news that just broke. Um, I see some of you are dancing in your Zoom rooms. This is good news. The stay at home order is um, going to be lifted. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we get into that. Um, if you are joining us for the first time, this is our weekly call for our board of directors and members of our downtown business association to get together. These are our downtown slow uh, board of directors. So thank you for to all of you for your leadership. You will notice that there is a new face here. Um, we have a new council city council member liaison and that is Jan Marks. So Jan has been will be joining us at our uh, February board meeting and our alternate will be Andy Pease, and I see Councilmember Pease on the call today. Thanks for joining us, Andy. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, so our next board meeting will be in February, and soon you will be receiving a ballot for the next round of elections to our board of directors. Um, so thanks to those of you who are decided to run again, and those of you who will be running for the first time. So with that, um, I'm gonna let Rachel give you all the good news. Good morning, Rachel. Thanks, Dina. Uh, so yes, as Bettina mentioned, we have really good news to share this morning, and that is that public health officials lifted the regional state home order for all regions. So all of California is now no longer under the structured regional state home order, um, and I'm going to provide the link to that press release in the chat following the update, but just wanted to get you that information first if you haven't checked the news yet. Um, as for the counts, uh, as of Friday, 16,437 cases of COVID-19 have been reported in Slow County, with the city of Slow accounting for 2,928 of those cases. The total number of deaths due to COVID-19 is 151 in the county, um, and our thoughts go out to their families and loved ones during this really challenging time. Testing is available and you can visit readyslow.org to learn more. And on the next slide, we wanted to provide a reminder of the purple tier. It has been quite a while um, and I'm sure many of you know uh, what the purple tier is, but just wanted to walk through a quick reminder that you know, restaurants will be allowed to open outdoors again with modifications. Unfortunately, bars uh, are still closed. Retail is allowed to increase their capacity, so 25% for indoors. Hair salons are able to open indoors, gyms outdoor only, nail salons indoors with modifications, personal care services indoors modifications, tattoo and piercings open indoors with modifications, museums outdoor only with modifications, places of worship outdoor with modifications, movie theaters outdoor with modifications, hotels open with modifications, family entertainment centers, outdoor, and non-essential offices, remote work only. With that, Bettina, I will let you give a vaccine update. Great, thanks, Rachel. And yeah, we all kind of needed a reminder at that. Um, if you have any questions about your business's ability to operate, we do recommend going to the state website um, or also checking in with, um, with the city of SLO, with Lee Johnson, who'll give a report in a minute, um, or also with the county. So I actually really appreciated that reminder myself. Looking forward to getting a haircut, um, and I think I might even be able to get a massage. Is that something that might be considered? I shouldn't spread rumors. Let me do some research before I confirm that that's the case. Um, this is definitely good news, and especially for all of you out there who've spent so much time and money um, pouring into your business to make sure that it could operate safely. Um, we're waiting to hear about exactly when this is gonna go into effect, um, but we'll probably learn more about that together um, on our call this morning. Um, so good news also about the vaccine distribution in Slow County. Um, I read last week that there have been about 4,000 shots administered in our county, and we are currently in phase 1B. 
So um, that means that if you are over 65, get ready because your turn is coming. And if you're over 75, please sign up now. Um, I know a number of my friends who are in that age group have gotten their vaccines and it's very exciting um, to see that move forward. So reminder that we are still just in the final week of January. The vaccine became available um, in mid-December and we're already into um, a point where we're, we're vaccinating people who are just regular people um, of a vulnerable population. So please go to the county website and sign up so that you can become informed about when you will um, be eligible. Now you will note that this graphic which came directly from Recover Slow does not show a date timeline um, along with these boxes, which is unfortunate, but we, we just don't know enough about when the vaccines will be coming to know exactly when you'll be able to. But there, were, there are people working hard at this um, and we'll be learning more about it as soon as it um, becomes real information. Um, just another little note about the state and federal relief that's coming. Um, the Paycheck Protection Program opened last week. Um, there were some new organizations and businesses that are eligible, including nonprofits of the 501c6 variety, which is what Downtown Slow operates primarily as. So I'm pleased to say that we submitted our application to the Paycheck Protection Program last week, um, which will be good for our organization. And a special thanks to Carl Dudley, our treasurer with Pacific Western Bank for helping with that application. The federal relief program also includes um, significant amount of funding for live event venues, um, as well as some small business grants that are going to be coming out over the course of the next couple of months. We also, of course, have stimulus payments. Um, President Biden announced last week that those stimulus payments may be um, increased, and we'll be watching very carefully what will be coming out of the White House as his administration um, starts to build packets, packages and um, pass those through the Senate and the House. Um, and of course, there was increased funding for vaccine distribution and coronavirus testing. Um, and also notable in President Biden's relief package or economic update from last week is a real focus on supplemental nutrition aid and focusing on people who are experiencing food insecurity in this country and trying to reach people who are really most vulnerable at that time. So um, I wanted to remind everyone as well, we sent this out in our weekly delivery that goes um, to you on Tuesdays. There is, through our partnership with Main Street America, we learn about different grant programs that become available. There's a small business grant for through uh, Main Street America and Brother International. It's called the At Your Side Business Grant. And I did write a couple of letters of recommendation for businesses who wanted to apply last week. Um, let me know, email me if your business wants to apply for these. I'm happy to provide that service. Um, that's part of what we do as your downtown association. It is the final week of our restaurant month, although we would all argue that restaurant month is every month um, in downtown. Um, but this is a really great special promotion that our County Tourism Marketing District Visit SoCal um, puts together where you have a $30 prefix menu and we've got a lot of downtown slow restaurants participating. So please get takeout and it looks like you'll be able to order your uh, restaurant month in a parklet and a patio this week. So that's exciting news indeed. You may be, be able to eat some of this food off of a real plate served to you by an actual human being. So that's good news. Um, up front, we're going to ask our first stakeholder update from Courtney Kino at Cal Poly because I know you have another meeting to go to. So welcome, Courtney. How are you doing today? I'm great. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry about that. I have our emergency operations meeting that happens right at 1030 every Monday. So I appreciate you all allowing me to go first. Um, and good morning. Today is the first day of the fourth week of winter quarter for those keeping track. Um, we, the ASI president, uh, Shana Lynch, who sometimes joins us for this call, I wasn't able to look through and see if she's on today, um, but sent a note to all students on Friday reinforcing um, all of the safety guidelines and noting a rise in cases on campus, especially among our asymptomatic um, students. So with that, as of Friday, um, we had 1,246 positive cases, and that's since we began tracking. 136 of those are from this quarter. 
we've conducted um, about 45,000 in 500 tests in our ongoing testing program. So that's for students who are, um, have no symptoms and no known exposure. Of those 45,000, about 28,000 of those have been conducted this quarter. So that's nearly 10,000 tests per week. And we have another um, just over 700 tests that have been conducted for our staff and faculty. Um, right now, we have 73 students in on-campus isolation, which leaves us with about um, nearly 220 beds open or available for um, if there should be a need for isolation on campus further than that. Um, we have 114 students in quarantine and 506 in quarantine in place. And I think it's um, been a while since I explained that quarantine in place, so I'll just quickly talk about it. Um, quarantine in place is a special categorization given to Cal Poly by County Public Health. And it's um, students who basically live on a residence hall where one student has tested positive. So they may or may not have had any contact with that student, but we still put that floor on further restriction. And that means um, they are able to do very limited things outside. For example, um, they need to wear masks, um, but can go um, get food really quickly and come right back um, and things like that. If they need medications, they can go and do that as well. Um, we are really close to finalizing saliva testing and wastewater testing on campus. And that is going to further increase our capacity for testing that's expected to be operational in the next few weeks. Um, the president did sign an executive order identifying specific groups on campus, basically anyone who lives on campus, has a reason to come to campus, or lives with anyone who um, fulfills those two categories to test twice per week. Um, and we are hiring a number of peer-to-peer uh, -peer influencers and ambassadors to further the public health messaging. So um, that's all I have for this morning. Thanks for having me. Great. Thank you, Courtney. And we appreciate the um, saxophone in the background. I think yeah. you're so good at multitasking. Really. <laughs> It's great, junior higher, junior higher practicing band. So, so much patience. Thank you, you all. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and do you have any updates on the, the vaccine front for congregate people who are living in the dorms? Um, yeah, so um, the, it's really interesting to watch the conversation that's happening statewide and then how our county is then interpreting um, the prioritization. Um, so we at the county level have um, our own task force that um, I have the great honor of sitting on representing higher education and um, working through for now, um, we are focused, um, as you mentioned earlier on the 75 and older category, um, but it looks like the state may be shifting to uh, prioritize age above business sector. Um, so all of that is still unknown, but, um, but it's, uh, it's definitely a um, evolving conversation. Um, also, I don't think I heard you mention this, but the um, Aurora Grande site opened today. So now our county has three sites that are allowing for or um, administering the vaccine. Um, so that's exciting up in Paso, in Slow, and then in Aurora Grande as well. That's great. Yeah, thank you for, for sharing that. And I know um, when we spoke a, a few weeks ago, you mentioned that there's a website where you can go and kind of advocate for your specific sector. Um, I appreciated that very much. And I went on and I gave a little plug for restaurant workers um, and service workers to be included and pushed up in the, the line of who gets vaccinated first. So maybe you could put that in the, in yep. the chat. I'm, I'm happy to do that and so glad that um, people are weighing in. Um, the task force looks at every single one of those messages um, and it's been hundreds and hundreds. So um, every, every voice is important and matters in that conversation. So yeah, I'll grab it and post it in the chat. Great. Well, thank you, Courtney. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay, up next, we have a special guest with us today. Um, we have Aiden Beals, who is the staff uh, 
I'm not sure what your title is, Aiden, I'm so sorry, with Supervisor Don Ortiz Leg from the Slow County Supervisors representing District 3. Um, Aiden, welcome to our Monday Response and Recovery call. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. I am Supervisor Ortiz Legg's legislative assistant. Um, which is, Sorry about that. No, that's quite all right. It's a very glamorous title for um, to, to describe, do a little bit of everything, um, which is really fun. Um, we have a couple of updates. Um, the supervisor regretfully cannot attend today, and I apologize for that, and everybody has to look at me instead. Um, but she really did want to convey to you all how excited she is about the news this morning. Um, she is incredibly, incredibly heartened um, that all these businesses that have put in so much effort to make their, uh, their, their businesses safe um, and welcoming um, during COVID um, can go back um, you know, and, and have a little bit more um, um, freedom in the way that they operate. Uh, I had one update um, that wasn't shared earlier. Our office received uh, notice from County uh, Administrator Wade Horton this morning that um, this is all effective immediately. So uh, we are now effective immediately back in the purple tier. This, the stay at home order has been lifted. Um, this, is, this is all, yep, yep, a little bit of dancing is, uh, is, is, is very, very uh, ex exciting here, yes. Um, and then we just had a couple of extra, uh, you know, items. Um, to bring up, um, there is a there is a meeting tomorrow um, in the Board of Supervisors Chambers. Um, there are two items that we wanted to kind of highlight for you. Um, one of them is the state legislative platform for the upcoming year um, is going to come, come before the supervisors. And the other is uh, there is going to be a Paso Robles groundwater basin um, item. And uh, I just wanted to share on behalf of the supervisor, you know, any any discussion, any action, um, that comes there is, uh, you know, the supervisor is going to be looking at, you know, how are we going to make a stable environment that the um, that, that all agriculturists in the region can make, you know, decisions for the future um, in a sustainable way um, going forward. Um, and and those are those are updates for um, tomorrow's meeting. And there are several other important. Uh, items on on the agenda, and we we welcome everybody to to call in and and to to view those items. I'm um, in to call our office um, if you have any comments on any of those. And um, we also have appointments coming. We have we have a a number of appointments. There are a number of boards that oftentimes go under the radar in the county, um, and they make a lot of really critical decisions. Um, and as a as a group of obviously very busy, but obviously very engaged people. Um, we wanted to highlight some of those to you and, and we um, plan on next week providing a full list of all the open, you know, all the vacancies that are on all of those, those boards right now to Bettina, hopefully, and she can, she can share um, with all of you and, and solicit some of your uh, input if you have anybody who would be interested or if you or yourself are interested in those. And um, we welcome, you to call our office at any time, um, email us at any time. My my line is always open. Um, I can drop my my phone number and my email in the chat. Um, and I really look forward to working with all of you. Thanks for letting me take up some of your time. Great. Well, Aiden, it's it's been great to work with you just in the last few weeks. And I've had a few conversations with Supervisor Ortiz Leg. Um, she and I both serve on the HSLOC, which is the Homeless Services Oversight Council. Um, along with uh, city council member Carlin Christensen. And um, she and I have had some really good conversations about those issues, about economic recovery, um, about how the Diablo closure is gonna affect macro level our county, but our district specifically. So it's just, it's really good to have her be such a, an advocate for downtown and have a supervisor physically in downtown again. Um, so thank you for being here. We look forward to building this relationship and um, look forward to hearing more about those appointments next week. That sounds like a great opportunity. Thank you. Great, um, thank you so much. And uh, we do have a special guest on this morning's call. San Luis Obispo City Manager, Derek Johnson is here today. Hello, Derek, thanks for joining us. Good morning, Bettina. And I just wanted to pop in and just echo the comments to everyone's excitement and exuberation about uh, the announcement this morning. Um, I received some calls over the weekend from some distressed uh, 
business owners in the downtown and just, you know, we're really concerned about the length and the duration of um, the, at the shelter and home orders and trying to balance out the need to keep their employees um, uh, having income and keeping their businesses viable and just the mixed messages were, that were out there. And so really hard to see that, um, we're, that the governor issued new orders. Um, I know Lee Johnson's on uh, this morning uh, with us. Uh, we're still moving forward uh, with our uh, grant program and other different programs you may have seen this morning. We also announced that we'll be doubling our uh, gift card program uh, for those really trying to stimulate people coming downtown and particularly on the heels of this news. Um, and just really excited about the news. I just also want to emphasize that uh, we will also uh, be encouraging people while we're out there because we want to stay in the purple and we want to find ourselves in the red and orange, et cetera, that we can't let up, that we need to continue to wear masks, social distance, and good hygiene. Um, you may have seen uh, that the federal government is talking about rolling out a 100-day uh, mask campaign. Maybe many of you caught Dr. Fauci and other uh, medical experts talking about the efficacy of masks and that um, perhaps 100 days could help us really reduce the amount of uh, spread of the disease and the impact on our communities as we also fight to, to roll out um, the vaccinations. And so you'll be seeing some of that campaign come out in earnest because I do have confidence that um, we can uh, really make an impact uh, with vaccinations and combined uh, with uh, mass usage. And then last, Bettina, I just wanted to also mention just um, if you happen to see some of your firefighters, uh, friends, do give them uh, a, a big uh, thanks. Um, we've, all of the cities in uh, the county have lent our fire safety personnel to help stand up our regional uh, public points of distribution. Those are the, what we, we affectionately call the P-Pods. They're the vaccination sites um, down in Rural Grande, up in Paso Robles, and the current one off of Sierra Way. Uh, and I dropped into the chat um, the link uh, to where everyone can find information with the latest uh, vaccination rates. Uh, we're ha hoping to vaccinate a few additional thousand individuals uh, this week at those three locations. And, you know, really at this point, we're just fighting for supply. So I'm um, hoping that with the, the signing of the, uh, of the Defense Production Act um, by President Biden, perhaps that can speed up um, some of the supply and really help uh, achieve the goal of trying to vac vaccinate everyone, um, you know, by the end of June of this year. Many of you may have seen that San Francisco just announced an ambitious goal where they're going to try to vaccinate everyone who wants a vaccination in San Francisco by the end of June. And so I hope we're, hope we're up to that challenge as well and hope that you guys can be a partner uh, to make that happen. So thanks, Bettina, for the chance to chat this morning and just wanted to uh, be there to share the exciting news with everyone. Great. Thank you so much, Derek. And um, we appreciate you joining us. We know you're really busy and we also appreciate the heart that you bring. We know that um, people are reaching out to you every day and um, we know that you care about downtown. So, so thanks yeah. so much for that. Um, all right. Up next, we have another uh, representative from the city of Slow. Our friend Molly Kano is going to share um, a little bit about the Buy Local Bonus Program and some other stuff, I believe. Hello, Molly. Good morning. Hello. And Derek, thank you so much. That was a, a perfect handoff and introduction to the Buy Local Bonus bonus. Um, which the city has um, has rolled out this morning in partnership with the chamber. Um, so just to give you guys a quick update, you should all be um, familiar, I'm sure, with the buy local bonus program um, that the city implemented in the mid in the middle of December. Um, and uh, that program has been off and running for just over a month now and has seen great success. To date, we've had over 132 businesses um, qualify to participate. And um, so that's really encouraging to see that so many businesses um, are signing up to participate in this program um, with us. In addition to that, we've seen over um, 1,000 shoppers, so almost 1,100 shoppers um, submit their receipts to be qualified for the program as well. And so in turn, that means that we've gotten gift cards, $20 gift cards into the hands of those local shoppers and diners 
um, to in turn go back and spend in the community again. So we're really excited to see that. In total, that accounts for almost $185,000 in local spending um, connected to this program based on those receipts that have been submitted. So really positive news there. We love to see our local community taking um, you know, our buy local bonus program, um, putting it into action and really taking um, it seriously to support our local businesses during this time. So this week, as a sign of appreciation, we've rolled out this new um, part of the program for the first 100 shoppers that submit their receipts this week, will be able to qualify for a second gift card. So um, not only will they get the first $20 gift card of their choice, but we'll actually give them an additional $20 gift card of our choice um, that they'll be able to spend at another local business. And so um, we're really excited about that. We would really love your help in continuing to spread the word about this um, and let your, um, your shoppers and um, diners know especially now with, um, as we roll into the purple tier, this is another activation and another way um, that we can get folks to um, participate, support local businesses and get some, um, some additional revenue in their, in their pockets and your pockets as well. Um, so businesses can also still sign up to participate. So if your business has not signed up to participate in the Buy Local Bonus Program, there is still time, we're still qualifying businesses. Um, so please go over to slowcity.org slash buy local bonus. I think Rachel just popped it in the chat as well. Um, and you can sign up to, to register as a business. Um, and that registration then allows us to be able to purchase that first $500 worth of gift cards from you. So um, that's what that registration means. Any local business and receipts from local businesses can participate for the shoppers. Um, so that's an important thing um, for our shoppers to know as well. And even if your business does not qualify um, to participate in the gift card portion of the program, um, you can still help us spread the word. So share with your clients, share with your customers, share with your employees um, the importance of supporting local and then in turn being able to participate in the buy local bonus. And this week, of course, the bonus bonus. Um, so that's what's going on in terms of buy local bonus. We've got a few other updates for you but I think Rachel has some of the graphics for us. So in addition, um, the Promotional Coordinating Committee has continued to work hard on um, different beautification projects for the city. And so one of the programs that the PCC has taken on is of course the banner program um, that you see throughout the community. So our first series really focused on cultural activities, events and happenings in our community. The second series is what you see up and displayed throughout town right now, which is our holiday series. And we have just approved our third series, which is our community reconnection series. And so you can see the banners up right here. Um, they were just approved last week and um, the PCC is very excited um, to be working closely with Downtown Slow and um, with others in the community to get these displayed. Um, they will be hung in downtown in Railroad Square and then up Monterey Street, and um, those will go into place in late February. So we're really excited to see this new kind of abstract, really vivid, bright color palette um, to um, brighten our community. Great. Thank you so much, Molly. These are really fun. Um, love that color scheme. Really fun to think about. We are looking ahead um, in our springtime promotions to do the Mayflower Initiative again, which was such a fun project we worked on last year during the, the first shutdown. And um, these bright colors, I think, will complement those quite well. So exciting to think about. Um, Molly, can you remind me of other opportunities that might exist in the, the PCC? Are you still doing the grants and aid program as well? We are, thanks for asking about that. Yes, so um, this year, for, for those of you who are connected to um, local nonprofits, um, this year we pivoted our grant program from an annual program to a modified program um, to be able to offer um, uh, grants to local nonprofits that are offering events or activities in a passive or virtual way. Um, and that program is an ongoing program um, applications are, in, uh, are due the first of every month at noon. So far, we've awarded nine of the 40 um, grants that have been available. So this kicked off in October. 
Um, and so since October, we've awarded nine of 40. Um, we still have plenty more available, so about 31 that we can still award. This is a $2,500 grant to go to support a passive or virtual event taking place in our community or connected to a nonprofit here in our community. Um, the PCC has about $100,000 to invest in this program. So there still is time available. Um, in addition, we have rolled out as a way to kind of help encourage nonprofits or also other organizations or groups or businesses that host different types of events. We rolled out an educational series in partnership with the Slow Chamber called Think Differently. Um, in October, we hosted the first session um, that featured um, local voices from um, Carson Butler. So we had Am Amber participate in that, um, but also had some really incredible, um, brilliant event minds um, from everywhere from Google and, um, you know, large events that have been put on in this virtual setting um, provide some inspiration and some ideas on how you can do that events in a new way. Um, so that's posted and available online. If you missed seeing the session the first time, um, you can head over to slowcity.org slash cultural GIA um, and you can see that session as well as um, find out all the information for the applications. We are going to be hosting a second educational series with the chamber um, a little bit later on in the next month. And so stay tuned for that. We'll be providing that for um, anybody that's interested in participating and learning kind of more tactical um, suggestions on how to produce virtual or passive events. Great. Thank you so much. I like your shirt too, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, up next, we have a, another speaker from the city of SLO, our friend Lee Johnson, Interim Economic Development Manager. And we, we're in a good spot today, aren't we? Lee is a happy guy today. <laughs> that, uh, that was good news. Um, and it's, you know, it, I think it's good for everybody. And now, as Derek said, we just need to keep, don't forget to wear the mask, social distance, everything. So we can bring the numbers down. We can get the kids back in school. We can get some in, 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 indoor dining, all of those things, get the gyms back open. So there's still a lot of work to do, but at least now we're in a place where people have a better chance and, and we can make some things happen. Um, one kind of tactical thing that let's not forget about, we're about to get a lot of rain here in the next few days. Um, so please, you know, for downtown with your floodgates, your, 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 your rain management plans, all that kind of stuff, please be paying attention because uh, the first big rain can really be a challenge. There'll be some more information coming from the city. I just want to give you that heads up. Um, also, I think, Rachel, you have the arrivalist data slide that we can show. Oh, yeah. sorry, there you go. So um, we get this data, just so everyone knows, so we've talked about it before, but a lot of the data that we get at the city, like sales tax data, things like that, come really late. They come three to six months after the fact. They're very hard to deal with. So through um, Chuck Davison and, and some others, we got access to this arrivalist data. What it is is basically meta cell phone data that tracks the people that come downtown. Um, so it's basically the same geographic area as the downtown business improvement district. Um, and a visit is recorded when there's 10 location pings within the zone and it's in the zone for at least 15 minutes, means it's a visit. If it's a local visitor, it's a device, it's home location is in within 50 miles of, but not within the downtown slow zone. So if you're within 50 miles, you're considered a local, non-local would be more than 50 miles away. They also apply additional filters to minimize staff, workers, delivery drivers, and that kind of thing in the data. So we've been getting this, you know, basically since the pandemic started and you can see how bad it was in the beginning in April and May. And then we actually started to either pass or be really close to the normal traffic in, you know, July, June, July, August and September. There were some differences in the makeup of the visits between local and non-local and also the length of the visits got shorter during that time, but we were still having the traffic. Then you can see in October, things started to shift, weather, all that. And then November with the stay at home order and like December was particularly bad. I, I shudder to think what it would have been like without 
um, light up downtown and buy local bonus and all of those things. But it's also important to note almost a quarter of that difference in December is related only to the holiday parade. So that not having that parade is a lot of people that didn't come downtown also you know, not having a Santa, all that kind of stuff impacts it. Um, so this is data that we look at very closely for what we can do next. And, and our real focus is both Molly and Derek mentioned is getting people downtown over the next three, four, five months. It's really a critical time for us. And, and anybody, if you have ideas about how to get more people downtown, how the city can help, always feel free to call me, email me. We're willing to talk about it. You know, we have buy local bonus. We have the grant program now. We're working. We've done more on the activation in Mission Plaza with um, with what we're doing with the new year and moving into February. So we're going to keep working on these things. We got good news today, but we have a lot more work to do. But we're going to keep plugging away and, and get us all through this. And I appreciate everybody's patience and time. And please stay safe. Wear your mask. Social distance the things we need to do so we can keep get everybody open as soon as we can. That's it for me today. Great. Thanks, Lee. This is really interesting data to dive into. And uh, I was especially just, I, I didn't know how much we were under-reporting the, the holiday parade and, and what kind of visitation that brought to the downtown. Um, so as we're looking at our organization, the programs that we're bringing back, more sort of passive types of activation, be it in Mission Plaza, um, maybe some walks through Mission Creek, um, various activities. We're going to be looking at extending those visits um, and making sure that the people are coming. Um, I think we've brought we've brought this up before, but the idea of people coming downtown to go to the theater, um, to go to church, to go to movies that might be increased that might be leading up to the decrease in the time that people are visiting as well. Um, I just had one point of clarification: when you say it's um, cell phone data, it's aggregate cell phone data, right? It's not saying like Bettina Swigger went to Jamba Juice. Yeah, I know exactly where you go every minute. No, it's <laughs> data, it's total aggregate, and they, they you know, it, it's one of those things that that uh, a lot of people get paid a lot of money for as far as targeting media and all that kind of stuff. So that's, this is kind of the basis of all of, a lot of those things. So you just Great, get okay. Yeah, just wanted to clarify that. I mean, we definitely live in sort of futuristic surveillance times, but um, the purposes of this is really to, to measure behavior um, over a group of people, not specific individual monitoring. So, cool. Thank you very much, Lee. Um, up next, we have Mr. Jim D'Antona from the Slow Chamber. How are you this morning, Jim? Doing great, Bettina. Good to see you. Good to see everybody on board here. Um, obviously, we're uh, we're sharing the same sentiment. Happy and can't wait to get all the data. And even though it's still the purple tier, which <laughs> is still restrictive, obviously we'll be better than uh, where we're at right now. And obviously, one of the key things we back everybody up here is we still have to do all the work to get to that red tier, that yellow tier. That's that's the goal is to get all the way open. And so doing everything we can to stay healthy is obviously the most important. So, but thanks for having me here today. Um, just wanted, just a couple quick items. Um, I think first for us is Good Morning Slow is on Thursday. We'll be doing it virtually. You can come in and see the, uh, the program, have some great folks. Um, talking about one of the interesting ones is the Exodus from California. Is it real? What is that? Um, we'll have a speaker from the California Association of Realtors talking about that. But most importantly is our um, Jen Miller, who's going to be joining us, is the chair of the vaccination task force. Um, so she'll be doing a great presentation uh, about where we're at, what's kind of going on. And um, again, only only five minutes of it, but it'd be, uh, it should be a really interesting uh, conversation along with a lot of other great speakers. So. I uh, invite everybody to join us on Thursday. It's virtual. Jenny from the Junk Girls. Yes, of course. <laughs> she, um, and actually, uh, you know, talking about specific, uh, it's going to be interesting to hear, especially with this now uh, happening, you know, uh, looking at how the holiday season went for retail and uh, where it'll be going, uh, hopefully, um, with the changes. So it should be a great, uh, really fun program. Um, and looking forward to that. 
And then secondly, uh, you know, this, uh, the partnership between the city and the chamber to roll out the $5,000 grant uh, will be announced later this week. Uh, actually, it'll probably be announced on Monday, but we'll be letting the businesses know um, this week, uh, Friday-ish, to of who will be receiving the grants. Um, and um, I will say there were 500 applicants for 100 grants. So uh, it's so you know heartbreaking to see the amount of need. Of course, we know it, uh, but we know all of these businesses who have applied could use it. Uh, we're just um, going through the process and using all of our statistics to try and spread this down so that make sure we at least support some of our businesses and do everything we can as we get into this position where, as Derek said, you know, businesses were struggling coming down to their you know, last bit. So hopefully this this will all come together in time to with the buy local bonus program, buy local bonus bonus program, uh, the relief fund and the reopening pieces that we can start moving in the right direction. So um, we'll be available if there's any questions or things we can do to help out, always let us know. Um, and thanks for giving us some time. You bet. Thanks, Jim. Um, I saw something come up in the chat related to the people's ideas about it being safe downtown. And I do want to remind everybody that we are about one month into, well, two months now into our partnership with Capslow, providing dedicated social workers um, doing outreach to our unsheltered people in the downtown. And this program got off the ground um, in the middle or the beginning of December. And we had, have had two workers, um, Maria and Cecil, who are pictured here. Um, Maria has accepted another position within Capslow, and so she will be working at 40 Prado full-time, but Cecil will be our dedicated outreach worker. Um, and he's very knowledgeable. Um, he's actually re recently re relocated to the Central Coast from Fresno, where he worked in homeless outreach um, for a long time and has a lot of really varied experience and great perspective. Um, so this is a person first approach and it's predicated on the idea that to really get people who are um, in need of services, you have to build and establish trust first. And this is something we've talked about a lot with our ambassador program and it's a general principle of outreach to unsheltered individuals. So um, Cecil will be working alongside other social workers who are doing outreach um, in the downtown and the city. So that includes things like the CAT team that come out of the San Luis Obispo Police Department, as well as TEMA, which is Transitional Transitions Mental Health Association. They do outreach as well. So since we launched this program, um, a number of people have been established and connected with services. Um, they've been put into very complex acronym heavy social services networks that require a little bit of handholding. And we're really pleased that this is successful so far. Um, we'll be having Cecil come on in the next couple of weeks to give an update about what he is seeing and what kind of work is being done. Just an update, the um, warming center at 40 Prado will be open tonight. They are open when the weather drops below a certain threshold and also when it's raining. So let's all be aware of the, the weather that's coming down um, in the next couple of weeks. One of the really fun things we've been doing downtown is the Love Your Local Downtown Tunnel of Love in Mission Plaza. So I hope you've had a chance to see this and come and take some photos. Um, it's got some great conversation hearts. And as part of this initiative, it is, uh, we're doing something called the Intention Initiative where we're asking people to share their wishes. It's a community art project and you can go in Mission Plaza, pick up a postcard, fill it out, illustrate, draw, um, send in to us and you can see some of the wishes that are coming in. Um, we've got some of them hanging in our window downtown at 1135 Choro. We're getting some really cute messages from children. Um, people are wishing for all kinds of things. Um, some people want to just have joy in every little thing. Other people have expressed wishes to complete master's programs. So this is really just an idea to spark a little bit of joy and hope during 
um, a scary time. And we hope that as we're, you know, effectively in the purple tier now, maybe as people are waiting for tables at restaurants, in parklets, um, if they have to wait a little while due to modifications, maybe they can come over to Mission Plaza, make a wish and take some photos in the tunnel of local love. Today is also the deadline to respond to the City of Slow's major city goal um, feedback. And just a reminder, this is a project that um, started with, an, with a survey on Open Town Hall and then went into a community forum, which happened two Thursdays ago. Um, and then now through today at Open Town Hall, you can go in and make your votes on what items you would like to see the city focus on over the next two year in their budget cycle. Um, I put a screenshot up here on some of the items that are related to downtown vitality uh, that, will, that were identified both through that survey and also through the community forum. You can see there's things like permanent parklets. Um, there's things like free and more parking. Um, there are also some things that are um, seemingly contradictory like support the, the Palm Nipomo parking structure or do not build the Palm Nipomo structure. Um, so we encourage you to go on and fill this out. Downtown, Downtown Vitality is one of the main areas where you can see um, and give your sort of dots that you get to vote. It's fun, it's easy, it doesn't take a lot of time. Um, and here's the link in the chat. So with that, we're coming up at 1048 today. It's a great day. Um, we're excited to be back into the purple tier immediately, but as many people have said here, this doesn't mean that uh, we don't still need to be vigilant. And um, if you are still feeling um, like you do not want to go eat in outdoor parklets, that's okay. You can still order takeout and get delivery online if you don't feel feel like you, you need to be leaving your house, um, you can go onto our website, downtownslow.com, and you can look at our business directory. You can look up, um, even search by which businesses have gift cards available. So we invite you to check that out. We're updating it every day. Um, we look forward to sharing with you the, um, the changes as they come. And we hope that with, our, with all of us working together, we can move through the purple tier quickly get more people vaccinated and go into the red and then eventually continue to reopen our economy. Um, our, our, e our inboxes are always open. You can email us at reachus at downtownslow.com. Um, we have our Facebook business group. We have our emails that come out to you each week. We look forward to hearing from you. We wish you a happy Monday. Um, stay warm and be well. Thank you.